everyone. We got Bob in the background. I'm gonna give people a few minutes to get on. I know I'm coming on early, but I wanna make sure that people can find me. And then we're gonna paint this awesome pineapple. Hello, go ahead and say hi when you're on, just so I know you're here, I know you can hear me. I'm gonna check my computer every once in a while, make sure that I can see people's comments if they ask me questions. Awesome. Oh, it looks like people are finding me. We're getting there. That's good. Awesome. Cool. We got four people on. Good. Nice. So you guys go ahead and say hi when you're on or at least give me a heart or a like or something so I know that you can hear me, I know that you can see me. And then we'll start talking about paints and then we'll get to painting. So I hope you guys are enjoying your Sunday. Um, I know that at least here it's kind of overcast, which kind of sucks, but it's kind of refreshing at the same time. Um, and it's a really good day to paint nice and early. You can still do a lot of things with the rest of your day. So, oh, perfect getting some hearts, getting some likes. Cool. We got Bob in the background. He's here for some inspiration. Does his painting all the time. I bring Bob with me everywhere to my uh, public paint parties. Hi, Melody. Hi, Erica. And if you notice this, it's supposed to say paint, sip, repeat. That's my motto, but I don't have a P. So this works too, paint, sip, re-eat. We eat a lot and drink a lot at our paint parties and uh, breweries and restaurants, so. Awesome, okay, so what time is it? Perfect, it is 10 on the dot. So people are still gonna be coming on, popping on and off. Um, and as you know, we're painting this lovely pineapple and I think, look how I, you can see that gold, that glitter shine when I move it. This one's super fun super easy as well. Um, so if you have it in the event, there's a um, tracer that you can print. You can also freehand it uh, for the pineapple. So you need to trace your pineapple on your canvas before you do it. Um, if you trust yourself, you really don't have to. You can freehand it. Um, it depends on the paints you're using. Good morning, Kristen. Um, and uh, if you have really good coverage paint, it works pretty well. Um, but if you don't, it's easier just to trace it and then go around it. That's what I'm going to be doing. So this will stay here. What I'm going to end up doing, though, is I'm actually going to flip my phone and you're going to see the canvas right on. You're not going to see me anymore. Um, and I'll bring this in and out. This is a 16 by 20 canvas. Um, it has holes in it. This was an old one. It has an old design. If I bring it closer, you might be able to see the design kind of in the yellow. But... Uh, that's all you need. You can paint on a chair, you can paint on cardboard, whatever you want to paint on. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so this one actually is a 12 by 16. You can see I pre-traced this one on. And we'll start painting that. So the paintings I'm using, or the, the paint I'm using actually, um, today, I usually use Liquitex, but this is Deco Art. Um, and I love Deco Art because um, they make a million different colors. You don't really have to mix anything. Um, and they're cheap. You can find them anywhere. This is Deco Art Americana. It has, has really good coverage. Um, and they're just really a lot of fun and really easy to use. It's just, what, two ounces? That's plenty. I get through so many paintings with two. So I'll show you the colors as I use them. But I'm going to flip my camera upside down now, uh, mess with it a little bit so you guys have good lighting, and then we'll start. So let's see. Let's go this way. And I'm going to be upside down for a second. And let's turn this right here. This just gives you a way better visual and I'll fix the lighting as well. Here we go. And this, good. There we are. Get this in there. Can you guys see that okay? Oh, good morning, Amy. 
Gonna paint that pineapple. There we go. We got the sun shining in this room, so it has a little bit of a natural glow, which I really like. Cool. So the first thing I have is my paint plate. You can also use a paper plate, right? So I have, we're gonna start with our background. And I have three different deco art colors. So the ones I'm specifically using, you do not need these. So this is a teal version, right? So the ones I'm using are Sea Aqua, Laguna, and Bahama Blue. Um, they just worked well together. Now, if you don't have any teal, that's okay. You can take some red and green. I mean, sorry, red and green. Green and blue, and then make some teal. So I'll show you what that looks like especially because most of us just have these primary colors at home. So if you were to make teal, you can put some blue down and some green down. You might, you're going to want some white too. And then to mix those colors, so you can make whatever color you want but you just mix two of them together and you'll see how it makes this really pretty teal color. Now this is a darker color, right? When, cause we want three different colors. So then you can grab some white and add to it, grab some of this, add more white and add to that. So now you do have three different teal colors. You have a dark, a medium and a light. So something like that. So you can mix those colors if you just have blue and green. Now, because I have the other colors, obviously I'm just gonna use those. So I'll attempt to keep up. Yeah, this one goes really fast. And um, for everyone who's watching, this is basically what we call wet on wet painting. Um, so, well, it is, but I do have a hair dryer. So if you don't have one, grab one of those because that's gonna be really important um, to dry the background so we can keep going. If not, it's not the worst. Um, this also does post, so you can view it any time. But even so, it's still wet on wet, meaning it doesn't really have time to dry. There's one blue. And with these deco arts, you do have to shake them um, quite a lot sometimes to mix that color. Otherwise, it kind of comes up gooey. So these definitely are not in order, but so I'm going to use this as my darker one. This is my lighter one. This is my in between. This is more of a green color, but I think it works really well. So I'm going to start with my, this is my one inch flat brush. If you have a three quarters flat brush, that works just as well. Um, these are really good. This one is a Simply Simmons. These are really good at blending. Um, and when we're doing the background, uh, it has to be wet for it to blend. So it does go pretty fast. And just note that I paint all the time um, and I tend to care a little bit less and I promise that's what makes a better painting. Um, so, and when we get to a color, I'll show you how to blend it. So we're gonna start on top, but as you notice, so my pineapple's not really finished up here just because the tracer didn't finish it, right? So what you can do, let me find a pencil. So because the, cause on my uh, first one, the pineapple was up here, so I didn't have to do the top part. But on this one, I'm just going to kind of finish on some points here and make something up. Kind of like so. There we go. So you don't have to do that. Your pineapple can be up above to where it is cutting off, and that's totally fine too. So I'm going to go straight into my lighter blue color. And again, if you have your three teals that you made with blue and green, you want to go into your lighter color here too. You can see how similar this is actually. Very close. So this is my lighter blue, bluish green if you will. And I'm just going to start, sometimes it's nice to start and just fill in this main part. When you're going around the top of the pineapple, it does not have to be right like perfect against these lines right so i'm going to get most most of it on there kind of edge it a little bit right so then i can just go crazy but you can see with this flat brush you don't want to like trace it so perfectly 
because when we do the green, we'll just bring that green back up to the teal if we forget a, a space. So I'm just kind of getting these areas on here. And I'll bring it close up to you guys so you can see what I mean by that. Hi, Sarah. And I'll keep going this way. This part up here just takes a little bit more time just because we are going between all these little edges. But remember, this background has to be done kind of fast because it has to be wet um, when we start blending it. Now, of course, I'm a lot more confident with my brush than possibly some of you, just because I am painting all the time. And one thing that um, you start to learn the more you paint is you're watching the edge of the bristles. You're not really watching like where you're painting, right? Uh, you're kind of just watching the edge of the bristles and throwing some paint on there versus trying to be too perfect all at once. There we go. So I'm just gonna come down to the top part because remember we have two other colors here to do. And now I'm gonna do it with you this time. Um, so you wanna paint the top and the sides of the canvas as you go. So here, this is gonna be like an ombre effect. So I'm just throwing some color on the side. I actually can't see what I'm doing, so I'm hoping for the best. There, and you might wanna just pick it up just to do the top. But if you're painting on an easel, this is much easier. If you're painting flat, um, just note that you're gonna be touching this a lot too. So sometimes it's nice just to paint the edges when you get done. There we go. Hi, Monica. Oh, hi, Rebecca. All right, so we got the light color, right? So now this is wet. And again, remember it's fast. I'm gonna move into my medium color, which is this color over here. Um, it is a little bit more green, but it ends up looking really good. So I didn't even rinse off my brush or wipe it off. All I'm gonna do is now start painting green. Kind of edge around the pineapple a little bit. But I'm going straight up, right into that wet blue with kind of a light touch. And see how it just fades together because it's wet. If it was dry, it would be this like awkward line and you don't want that line. But at the same time, you don't need so much paint that it's just like bulky and it's just kind of gloppy all around. Like you get streaks of paint everywhere. You're not painting. Oh, I did, oh good. Well, you'll have to paint with me sometime. It's super fun. All right, and we wanna come down kind of to the same spot. But... And see, I'm getting into my pineapple a little bit. That's okay. I'm gonna end up wiping it out a little bit and I'll show you a trick for that. So remember to paint the sides. See how fast this goes? I bet you guys are all sweating. You're probably trying to keep up here. The rest of it does not go this fast, but. All right, so I've got my middle color on, right? So maybe if I really wanted to, I could dip back into some light blue and go back and forth here. I'm gonna move this up a little bit. And then immediately, same thing, I'm not rinsing off my brush or wiping it off. I'm going back into my dark color. And if you look at the deco art webpage, or even if you go in the store and find all those deco art paints, if you look in the teal or blue section, it's unlimited. Uh, they have so many different colors and they're all pretty similar, but also there's just a little bit difference. Uh, one of my favorite new ones is it's called Mermaid Tail. It's so pretty. Paint this one down here. This is where I start to hold my canvas a lot. So that's why I don't always paint the tops and sides because then it gets everywhere, which is nothing new. There we go. 
And I'm just gonna hold it right in the middle here to paint the edges. And you can always change the color of the background too. You do not have to do these colors, but they do work very well together. Sarah, if you're still watching, um, I was gonna have my really cool setup, my new setup, but we had to update the computer and it wasn't working, so I was lucky to get this on <laughs> right on time. All right, so that's my blended background. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab, I'm actually gonna grab a baby wipe if I have that, I think I do. Otherwise, what you can do is you can grab a washcloth or a paper towel, you can see I've used this one for actually a few days without washing it. Um, and to wipe out any excess paint, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just wanna wipe a little bit right here. A uh, few things you can do easier with that baby wipe, but if you take your washcloth and you dip into some water, it's okay if it has color on it, it's a little bit wet. I'm gonna take this with my finger and carefully just wipe it out. It's okay if it still has some color in it. I just didn't want that like really awkward line. And of course, if you have that baby wipe, grab that. It's way easier, but just watch the uh, the wet part of the baby wipe kind of dragging along here because it will um, move that paint around. Sarah, I tried the Switcher app and I didn't like it actually. Um, so I was using StreamYard. And I liked that a lot better. I liked the setup. Switcher app was um, pretty cool, but uh, I, I don't think I like the logistics of it. Okay. So there's that background of that pineapple. Um, and I know that background is still kind of wet, but that's totally fine. Um, what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna take my yellow. This is my pineapple color. Um, this is called lemon yellow, funny, right? But you can take any yellow. This one's kind of bright. I'm gonna shake it up here. And I'm just gonna literally pour that on my pan. Uh, you can put it on your plate and paint it too, that's okay, but this is a lot easier. And you want to make sure to get all this teal off your brush. You can see my, my color, my water is still teal. I never ever change up my watercolor unless it's just loaded with black. And then I wipe off all those water drops. I don't want any water drops on there. And I'm just going to start spreading this around. And you do want to be careful around those edges because we did just paint that teal, right? But it's okay if it overlaps a little bit. You just don't want to bring that teal back into your pineapple. And if you do, guess what? You just wipe it out just like I showed you with a wet washcloth or a baby wipe or whatever you have. You want to spread this around. And you can see it already, like it's just coming to life. It's so bright. This is such a fun one to have for like spring, but definitely hanging up in summer. A lot of, uh, especially moms, uh, we paint all these pictures. We're like, oh, we love it, but we're just gonna hang it in our kids' room. <laughs> Which is good because kids appreciate paintings way more than we appreciate our own paintings. We are, we're our own worst critics, so. Cool. So look at that, there's that pineapple. Okay, so we have our background and our pineapple. Um, and then the next thing I'm gonna go with, you do not have to have the same size of brush as I do for this, but what I'm gonna grab is, this is a number 12 flat brush. It's a pretty like cheap student brush, you know, it's nothing fancy. Um, it's just smaller than the one inch because I'm going to go into that green area and I'm going to start painting um, the green top here. If it's easier, uh, you can flip your canvas upside down and paint upside down because um, no joke, your shoulders get so tired really fast when you're just holding your arm up here, especially if you're painting flat. I'm going to move my chair here so I can get a little bit closer. 
Now greens, so if you have one green, that's okay. So I have a, just because I have it, right? I have a million different colors, but I have a regular green and I have a light green. You can make a light green. So if you just have one green, don't drop your palette on your pineapple. One green here, right? So then you just grab some of that and mix some white to make a lighter version. You can also mix some green and yellow and make a lighter version as well. So I'm gonna put that darker green on and this lighter green on. This lighter green just makes just enough difference to see it, but not a huge difference at the same time. So I'll put that over here. And I'm gonna dip right into my dark green. So how we're gonna paint the top is you wanna kind of stick with the shape, right? You wanna paint in the shape in each little, uh, not groove, but uh, stem looking thing. So what I mean by that is you have some green, right? And it's gonna be streaky. This isn't like a fancy, like awesome paint. You're just gonna paint like one section at a time, right? And you don't want a lot of paint because you need it to dry a little bit. So we're gonna do one at a time. And the only reason we do one at a time is because your brush strokes when you do it um, kind of helps you separate that for later because we want to see the edging of each of these little stems because we're going to actually outline them in black which I know sounds crazy because this is like a fun colorful summer spring painting but the black makes it pop so much so we'll do each one individually and you can use a smaller brush if you want to um, and it, it just depends. Um, I get more confident with brushes, right? But not everyone feels the same way. You can use whatever brush you feel way more comfortable with. And then you can, you'll start to see, like as it starts to dry a little bit, I can see my pencil lines still. Now, if you're freehanding it, I would love to see because I like to trace before I paint. Maybe not everything, but when it gets a little bit detailed, right? Helps out a lot. Get some in there. I can see I already have some green in my hair and I have no idea how that happened. I can see it out of the corner of my eye. I always feel like every time I paint, somehow, like I'll end up with like paint on my undershirt or something. I just, I don't get it, it just appears. I've come to accept that I can't own one thing that doesn't have paint on it. Even my laptop and my phone case, gosh. Every new piece of clothing I ever owned. So this part is where it slows down a little bit, right? Just because it's a lot more detail. Not necessarily detail, it's just we have so many other lines to go around. Where are you guys all from? Is anyone from, I mean, I'm based in Washington, right? And I know I have a lot of Washington friends on here, but is anyone from anywhere else? I always like to see who kind of pops in and pops out. Okay, so we got that. You can have, if you're freehanding it, you can draw less, uh, I keep calling them pineapple stems. I don't really know what they're called, but pineapple leaves, that's not really a leaf. Yeah, school clothes <laughs> at thrift shops. Yeah, Sarah, I know it's, I think it's just what we do, but still it's like, I bought a brand new shirt and then I was like, I'm not gonna paint with this on, but you just get so excited and you start painting and you try to be careful and it just doesn't work. The funny thing is, uh, since I've been pregnant, I've been having to wear my husband's sweatshirts and clothes a lot, um, just around the house, right? Like I'm not gonna go buy like five pairs of maternity pajamas or, you know, leggings that are comfortable, but um, 
and I always tell myself like take his sweatshirt off before I start painting but then I start painting and then I freak out if I get a dot on it because of course he's going to get a little bit mad right um there is work sweatshirts and regular sweatshirts but he might even be watching right now <laughs> uh, but I, I do I end up getting it off before he comes home take off the sweatshirt just in time Ontario Canada awesome New York nice well, thanks for tuning in, you guys. So even if you're not painting, remember this will stay up on the main page. So you can actually um, watch it at any time. The supply list will stay in the event. Um, that's where I put the supply list. And that event stays, you just have to scroll to like past events. Or honestly, I mean, I'm going over supplies and materials while I'm doing this, so you can always get that too. I will, um, right now on my website, I also will have links to all of these on YouTube too. I have some of my old ones with supply lists too, so I'll get this one up there eventually. There's some green. So my pineapple is mostly dry. My background is definitely dry. Sarah, you're from Minnesota. Oh, perfect. I always had a, I had a friend in high school that was from Minnesota. Um... And she used to, I don't know if there's an accent there or not, but she said, she used to go, from Minnesota. And I don't think, I don't think Minnesotians sound like that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but pretty sure they don't. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my hair dryer and then I'm going to dry this. So it might be pretty loud, but I just want to make sure it's nice and dry. This is already, because I use such thin paint, this is already pretty dry. So just in case though. So it might be kind of loud for a second, just so you know. And that is enough for me. If you guys are catching up, that's perfect. I'm just gonna take a drink of my orange juice. Cool. So I also have my um, next two free events posted. So every Sunday, at least for a while, I'll be doing some free live tutorials. Um, and I put them up just a little bit sooner this time so you guys have a chance to get supplies, you have a chance to get anything that you need to if you want to. I know it's really hard right now to get supplies at art stores. I know that this is my last, um, I think, uh, 12 by 16 canvas. The rest of them I have are like 8 by 10 or 12 by 12 for kids, but um, I ordered some four days ago and it's still not ready for pickup in store. Well, curbs I pick up, but you know. So we have pineapple, we have the green, we have the background, right? So the next part is we're going to make the little V's on the pineapple. And I'll bring this in. So these are the V's. So I actually, I'm going to use two different oranges. You only need to use one, um, but whatever you're more comfortable with. So I actually, I have a neon orange and I, I ended up liking that a lot better. Um, and I have a regular orange. So when we're doing these, I take my one inch flat brush to do that. So again, make sure all that color is off. And again, so, okay, if you don't have orange, right, we all know red and yellow make orange. So let me put that on there. I know that's common sense, but I'll show you a little bit too. So red and yellow. So I'm going to pull out mostly yellow and a tad bit of red and mix that. And there's a orange for you, right? So you can use that. And then if you wanted like a different shade of orange, grab some white and it'll lighten it up for you too. So you can always do something like that. Um, otherwise, if you're me or if you have like a million different paints hanging around. Oh, it is true. <laughs> Minnesota with the shorter O sound. It's super cute though, I love it. So I have my regular orange. This one is called Tangerine. Uh, and this is Torrid Orange, this is a neon. 
and I really did not need this much paint, but I get so excited. So getting all those paint colors off my brush. And then, oops, sorry, I just hit the camera. I'm gonna bring my light around. It looks like, at least from my view, I know you guys can still see, but I want it a little bit brighter for you guys. Let's see. It's super bright when I'm watching on my phone. Turn that all the way up. I don't know if that helps, but we'll see. Okay. So right here, I'm going to go in, I'm going to go in actually with this regular orange first. So this would be like your darker orange if you made it with red and yellow. And I'm going to dip it right onto my one inch flat. So you can use a, a round brush if you want to. Um, and all we're going to do is just start making little V shapes. So I like this brush because it's, it's a good brush, right? But it's also very straight. If you have, let's see if I have one here. Sometimes if you have a cheaper brush, this is what it looks like. That is not very straight, so it doesn't really help me. So get a straight one. Uh, the round brush works because it's pointed, it's straight, right? So we're gonna make V's and then they're gonna kind of alternate. Like if you've ever done like mermaid scales, that's kind of how it works. So I'm just gonna start doing some V shapes in my pineapple and they're not perfect you know it's I like how maybe some of them are thinner some of them are thicker some of them are longer some of them are shorter and I'm just gonna keep going all the way down and of course this is not a realistic pineapple very uh not so much whimsical but like cartoony and fun right but those are the paintings that i like to do i don't always like <laughs> i don't like the perfectionist paintings or the ones that are very realistic i'm not a realistic painter if you've ever been to any of my classes um they're kind of just cartoony they're the fun ones which i'm so excited if we do end up going back you know starting may 5th in washington which I don't think is gonna happen, but if we do, I'm just so excited to get back to public classes just to have that interaction. Uh, people will have their adult beverages. Cool. So there's that dark orange. Um, and I know that's wet, but this is that wet on wet part. So what I'm gonna do, if you have a lighter orange that you made, uh, I'm gonna go into this bright orange. And I'm just gonna go, I'm kind of going just like right along the side of it maybe not on all of them and just brightening up aspects of these little v's it just makes it glow it makes it pop oh and this reminds me i'm super excited i'm going to test out a um i've been wanting to do this in person for a long time but i'm going to test out all of my black light paints and maybe do like an online virtual black light party. Something simple, something kids can do. Um, and if you have a black light, you know, it help, I would be actually painting it in the dark with that black light. If I can get lighting and set up, uh, I think that would be super fun. Something fun, especially for like birthday parties. I feel bad for all these kids that are having birthdays and can't really invite anybody over. Cool. Maybe I am doing on all of them. I didn't mean to, but I'm really digging it. So does something kind of messy? Did I miss one? Maybe one. There we go. Cool. And then once you have that on there, we're going to start going into the um, little marks kind of in between. So I'll show you the example again. Pineapple, right? So we're gonna end up doing all these messy parts in between. So we're gonna do a blue, we're gonna do a pink, and this is glitter, we'll do that in the end. If you have glitter. You can always add glitter to a painting at any time. 
So out of the three blues that I used, and this is the same blue for the background, I'm gonna take this round brush and I'm gonna go right into my darker blue color that I used. This is what I used on the bottom. And all you're gonna do is just pick a spot kind of in the middle, maybe above, and you're just gonna scribble in some blue paint, different sizes, different scribbles, nothing pretty. Put some on there. And you're gonna do this inside each V. It's pretty quick, this part goes pretty quickly. Did I get all those? Yeah, and you can do different colors, you guys. You don't have to do blue here. Yours is not charming like the Southern Troll. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's, it's charming probably to us in Washington, maybe not to you. <laughs> All right, oops, I just flung some water on my painting. <laughs> all right, so same thing. I know that's wet, but that's perfect. So I just rinsed off all the blue, same round brush. And, well, I have to make some. So I'm gonna put some pink on. Um, I have wild berry pink. This is deco art as well. Um, if you don't have pink, remember you can mix, surprise, surprise, some white and some red. And of course it's just, a, it's a little bit more reddish pink and it's not going to be as bright as ours or if you're using something like I am, but it's still pink. Okay. So shake this up here. Get these chunkies off paint. One of my most satisfying things, you guys, is when I have like chunks of dried paint on a paint bottle or like stuck in like the little pump. I love pulling that. I don't know what it is. I just love pulling it out. It's so satisfying. All right, so there's the pink. And then make sure you get all those water drops off your brush. And all I'm gonna do with this pink is do the same thing. Try not to mix it too much but just glop on some pink right under that blue. And sometimes it touches it and mixes it and that's totally fine. It makes kind of a nice little purple. So obviously pineapples do not have pink and blue. That's why this is a little bit more fun than painting a regular pineapple. Get some gloppies. Is digging. Oh, Brooke, you're a two year old. Oh, how cute. Is it a boy or a girl? You can um, <laughs> give them some, you know, finger paints and paper and tell them that they're painting along with us. Cool. Yeah, I don't know how many times I scroll the Facebook feeds, you know, and you just keep going through the videos and you end up stopping on this one and you realize you've been watching it for like an hour. Um, just because it's so satisfying to watch some of those things. All right, so we got our blue. I got some pink in here. I think what I'm gonna do is just go back to, uh, you know what, let's do black. Yeah, I like to do black. Okay, so this is the scary part for a lot of you, just so you know. And I'm gonna grab Let's see, I'm gonna grab, so this is my one inch flat again. I'm gonna get some black onto my um, palette here. But remember, this is a nice, thin, straight line. So I'm gonna grab black. I buy this at Michael's, you guys. This is Artist Loft Flow. It's easy, easy black, and it's a lot, and it works with almost all my paintings. The only reason why I would buy a fancier black um, is if like, I was trying to get just like really good coverage once out of one coat of paint. This one, it can get kind of translucent, so you typically need like two coats if you are really trying hard. Oh, that's so cute. Hi, Oliver. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, here you are. <laughs> but this is your thing. Okay, so I'm gonna dip right into some black paint. So again, you can use a smaller brush. You can even use a Sharpie or a paint pen, whatever you wanna grab. 
Um, but make sure it's dry if you're grabbing an actual pen. So I'm gonna take this black and I'm gonna actually just start edging. Now this is where I see those pencil lines. I'm gonna just start edging and you'll see it's not like, I'll bring this up, it's not right on top of that green, right? It's kind of within or off to the side. Um, I'm not trying to perfect it at all. I'm just gonna get some black on here and you'll see how this makes it pop. It's so scary to do black and to be so fast and quick with it. Um, but it always looks super good in the end. Get some on here. Now, if you were to buy just, you know, one nice brush, I would highly recommend getting a Simply Simmons one inch or three quarters brush. I've had this one for quite a while and as long as you keep it nice and clean and then you kind of reshape it um, every time you use it, uh, it lasts for a long time. What else? Got that on there. Sometimes you have to use just like the corner of the brush just to outline a little bit. Oh, here's one here. It's like a puzzle. And then sometimes you like, maybe I just wanna make, maybe do like a second dash or second outline on one of them or make a few of them thicker. I never know exactly where I'm gonna do it. So if I'm doing this and you're like, wait, where am I? What am I doing with that? Uh, I can't tell you. I just kind of go wherever my brush goes. Sometimes I like it and sometimes I don't, but you got to work with it. You got to be brave. And the best part is because it'll be posted, you can do it again if you want. All right. So that one, right? So that was a little difficult going into all those little grooves, but we're going to trace the pineapple in black. So again, I'm taking this brush. Again, take another one if you want to, and I'm going to take some black and edge right around the pineapple. So I'm watching where I'm going and not where I am when I'm doing this part. If that makes any sense to you. And half the time I'm not breathing, but that's okay. There. And so you can see it's already starting to pop. It's starting to come a little bit more vibrant. So nice black outline there. And then guess what? We're also going to outline kind of right underneath that last layer of orange on all these V's. And it doesn't have to be that full outline. If it starts to pull some of that, uh, like blend, like, excuse me, if that orange starts to go into your black a little bit too much, just wipe off your brush and start over. Grab some new black. And sometimes I'm going over my orange a little bit, but. This part, I don't know why, it's just so therapeutic to me. Very relaxing. Oh, see, I missed some bright orange on this one. That's okay. Now, if you ever, like, if the stores are running out of canvases and art supplies, right? So, especially canvases. If you've ever been to a paint and sip class, or if you have something, or just, I know we can't even go to Goodwill anymore, but if you have anything, you can always take an old picture. Maybe you don't like it anymore. Maybe you're done with it. Paint some coats of white on it, and then you can start over. Um, sometimes, like, if it's a really, like, thin, like that black I showed you, I have the same thing in white. If it's really thin, you might have to do like four or five coats and let them dry in between. Um, but it's a really good way to just bring art back into something that's just been sitting there for a while. I know for one, I have this 
one of my very first paint and sip classes when I was a lot younger, <laughs> younger, uh, let's go back, uh, like maybe seven years. Um, but my, I, I don't hang it up. I just keep it in my closet. Um, so what I should do with that, but I like to keep it. It's like a sentimental thing for me, but, um, just paint it white and just reuse it. Cool. So we got some black. Canvases are the one thing that Michael has. Yeah. What sizes do they have? I know that Joanne had a great sale the other day. And I know you can get the panels and some canvases at the dollar store too. It's harder when, like if I provide a traceable, you know, shrinking something down to a different size is different, but. That tracing paper um, is really hard to find. So I found that in some of my wholesale accounts, but. All right, so this is coming alive. We just, I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but we don't have too much left to do. Um, so I'm gonna go back to the top part of the pineapple and I'm going to grab, so I'm gonna, so we have our base layer of green, right? So now I'm just gonna start kind of just loading up green and adding green different shades in different areas. Same idea though, like I'm just gonna kind of put some on there. Careful if that black is still wet. Mine actually dried pretty quickly. I'm not filling in that green completely, right? So I'm just taking the main part of the pineapple and just throwing in green on that. Oops. And dropping it on my canvas, that's fine. That's really wet with black, so I'm gonna try to avoid that. This just gives it that like extra texture So this is my regular green. I'm gonna come back in with some light green now. So I have a lot of that on there. Now I'm gonna grab this light green. I don't rinse off my brush, but I'm just gonna start putting light green in some areas just to add some uh, definition kind of, but more dimension to these leaves. I don't really, I don't like to do anything one solid simple color. Now, if you enjoy watching these and you enjoy doing them, the free ones I do are pretty simple, um, or I try to keep them simple at least, but they're still fun. Um, I do have, and it's the first post pinned to my main page. If you guys are ever interested, I do have my um, virtual club. And what I'm offering during this launch is if you join before May 15th, and it's half full, so I'm only accepting 50 people, uh, you get seven tutorials, plus these free ones, right? Seven additional tutorials, including a date night, uh, which is super fun. My husband kind of joins in. Um, and then from then on out, you get three tutorials a month, plus bonuses and discounts and different activities. Um, but only if you join before May 15th do you get those seven. Those, and then four of those will disappear, and they will only be um, accessed by the people who join during that time. Then I'm gonna close it and I won't let anyone else in until September and it'll actually be more expensive. So it's $35 a month right now. Okay, some of the bigger ones are running low, yeah. I love 11 by 14, you can do almost anything with that size. Cool, so we got some light green, we got some dark green, just chunkies in there, right? It looks a little bit different. So let's go back, we're gonna let this dry a little bit. Um, I'm gonna come back down to, you know how we did like these blue and pink blobs? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take like a lighter pink, right? So if I probably have lighter pink, but I'm just gonna make it. So I'm gonna take the pink I have on my plate and grab some white and make a lighter pink here. And what I'm gonna do with this, so you can take, um, if you have a round brush, you can take the tip of the round brush. I like to take the back end of a brush and because this is round, right? If it was flat, I wouldn't use it. And I'm gonna dip into this light pink. And you just need some dots, but I'm gonna dot. Sometimes you have to roll the brush a little bit, but I'm gonna get these 
right around these blue dots. So it's either like in or on or kind of around this blue dot on the pineapple. And I'm gonna do this to each one. And you can always make more light pink, like if you're running out, it doesn't have to be exactly the same color. Oh, and for Mother's Day, I have a great, I'm gonna have like a challenge. Um, challenge is basically, we're gonna, I'm gonna decide what we're gonna paint. Um, and you're gonna do like a mommy and me or something with your mom or, you know, your grandma, something, whoever is your person. And uh, I'm gonna open up like a little challenge group and then we'll paint, we'll do a live and you can watch it later, but you just have to submit your photo by a certain date um, and you get active into a prize box and there's gonna be multiple prizes. So it's not really like who's better than the rest. It's just like, you know, most creative background or, um, you know, most kids accepted into challenge or something. Maybe a mom did it with five kids versus one, something like that. Okay. So we got our pink dots. I think I got some in every little section. Good. Where did I put that round brush? Did I lose it? I don't know. Let me grab another round brush. I <laughs> have no idea where I put mine. Okay. So round brush. So I know that this green is still wet, that what we did up here. So I've got that darker and lighter green. So I'm gonna add just like some pink highlights, right? So it's so it's very strange, of course. But I'm gonna go back into that darker pink, you guys, and just throw pink on there wherever I want. Um, I know that doesn't help you, but just throw it in random areas. So when you're doing this though, because it's wet on wet, right? So if you have that wet green, I always dip, I do one stroke and dip back into some pink because I don't want it to mix with that green. And if it starts to mix too much, then you can just again, wipe off your brush. Just little guys here. I want to try to stay away from too many because this can be kind of fun. Good. So I've got that brighter pink in there, that darker pink. And then I'm going to grab this lighter pink color that I made for those dots and just kind of do the same thing, but probably just a little bit fewer. Obviously, no pink in the pineapple leaves, but super fun. Now, if you had like a themed like kids room, you know, something summery or pineapple or even just like a washroom, um, do like the accent colors of your room and I think that would look really cool. There we go. Maybe some up here. Sweet. Get some pink on there. So when, if you guys are painting along, when you're done, I would love, love, love to see if you posted um, your picture of your painting. You can be in it, you don't have to be. Um, and then either tag my business or if you're friends with me personally, tag me as well. You can post it on the business page. You can even post it in the live, the event that uh, you found this on. Um, something, I wanna see them. I love seeing what you guys do at home. So many people change things, make it a little bit different and I love to see that. Okay, so here's the other fun thing. So you don't, a lot of people don't just have these laying around. Um, so this is a deco art, it's a metallic luster. They make a ton of different colors and I have all of them because they're so shiny and so much fun. When I open it, you can see how it shines. I use these a lot when we paint um, like those ceramic Christmas trees during the winter. And it's just kind of a shine, right? So you can also use, a, you know, deco art makes like metallic paint as well, you can use that. Um, and this is the part that you, again, you can skip or you can kind of mess around with it but I'll show you here. So on this pineapple, you see that just like awkward shine around the pineapple. That's what we're going to work with. So 
Let's grab. So I'm just taking this round brush here and I'm gonna grab the same dark pink that we've been using. And I'm just gonna do like a, like a soft edge. It's not even like this perfect line. I'm gonna outline this pineapple with this pink. Now let's just say you didn't have any metallic or anything. You can do the same thing with paint. Um, same technique and you'll just use the same colors. Um, like you would use maybe like a blue and a pink when we get there. So I've got this pink outline, right? Now this is still wet and it's not super globby. So I'm gonna set that down and I'm gonna grab this metallic luster here. And I'm gonna take some in my finger, it spreads around a lot. And I'm gonna start spreading this metallic luster right over, or like right next to you or over, spread it around wherever you want. And it makes this like really nice purple color. So if you're doing this with just paint, you can grab some purple paint, put on your finger, and just spread that around. Maybe some pink or, you know, you can make purple with red and blue. You might not get that shine, right? Because it's not like this metallic color, but you can always get glitter later and add to it. Or if it ends up looking really cool with just purple, then don't do anything with it. Or if you have gold, we'll add some gold glitter, but anything, just like a, anything to make it work. And spread it around as much as you want. Make it thicker. So shiny. Love that. This stuff lasts forever too. But you guys, with something like this, I never buy it full price. So I always wait for it to go on sale. So let's see if you can see that shine. There's a little bit of shine. So that metallic luster is so good for all the paintings. Oh look, I found my round brush. So this I could do forever. I, you can even take some of that and just do like little swipes around the background. That would look really cool. And they come in, like I said, so many different colors so you can grab all of them. All right, so there's a little outline around the pineapple. Um, now, if you have gold glitter, so you can also use clear glitter. Hey, Melissa. So nice to see you on here. Thanks for joining. Um, Sarah's on here too. Okay, so this is Deco Art. This is Gold Shooting Star. This is a thicker gold glitter. So any kind of glitter, right? Even if you have dry glitter, if your paint is wet, um, I would say put some on your hand and just blow it on your painting and it still shines so, so much. So this, oh, I'm so good. Teaching some pineapples, everyone's loving it. Okay, so this, see how thick that is? It's just got big chunks of gold glitter in it. And then this is my round brush here. And what I'm gonna do with this and again, any color works. You do not have to have gold, but I really like the way the gold stands out on this yellow. I'm just gonna grab chunks of it and just kind of like how we did the scribbles on the pink and blue dots, I'm gonna scribble some on, but I also want it kind of chunky. This is kind of right below, just right in that deep V. And you wanna do this in each one. And again, if you have dry glitter, maybe put, um, just a little bit of like maybe wet yellow paint down or something and then blow your glitter onto that. Whatever makes it stick. Or if you really wanted to, like if you have clear glue, you could do that too. Put that guy on there. Da, da, da. And this just makes it pop so, so much. Sometimes there's so many of these, I always miss one of them. Let's see, one, two, three. Good, and then this is glitter, right? So I put it everywhere. I'm gonna go into 
my grassy area, <laughs> grassy area, um, you know, whatever these things are, pineapple stems, pineapple leaves, and I'm going to throw some glitter on there. I love bringing glitter to my paint parties. Everyone loves the glitter. There is no wrong place to put glitter. I will tell you there. No wrong place. And then I'm also going to take whatever I've left and just throw some right around the ends here. Oh gosh, what a bummer. I need more glitter. This is a nice little touch. So, so shiny. Love, love, love it. And you guys, I think that is it. This pineapple is so sparkly, it will go in any room and put it outside. If you want to put something like this outside, what you can buy um, is a, there's so many different sprays, right? So what I use for like a lot of my wood projects is polyurethane. You can also use it on canvas um, and it kind of just weather coats it a little bit. And then you can put this outside and it should last for quite a long time. The only thing I've ever had happen is when I had my porch sign, my four foot tall snowman porch sign. Um, it held through the weather quite well throughout the winter, but the wind blew it down and it broke a little bit. But otherwise the polyurethane is great coating. Cool. So pineapple, what do you guys think? Nice and shiny, nice and pretty. So again, when you're done with yours, please, please, please share a picture with me no matter how you do it. I would love to see them. Um, and then remember, I'll turn this up the other way here. Sorry, I'm going to mess with the camera for a second. There we go. Sorry, you just saw my ceiling really quick. So remember when you're done, this is back on me. Hi, this lighting is lovely, isn't it? So whenever you're done, um, post a picture of your painting. You can take a picture of yourself with it. Uh, you can take a picture. I don't think everyone has a Bob Ross laying around. Um, but if you do, take a picture with him. Um, and then post it on my, my Facebook page or tag it. I would love to see it. You can also post it on the personal one. Um, and then next Sunday, we are painting this one. And that event is up, that supply list is up too. And then after that, we are painting this beautiful tree the next Sunday after that. And there's gonna be, um, the supply list are already up for those. So you can get those at any time. Um, and then our paint party club, that calendar is up too. So if you ever wanna see, just check out the photos um, of what we would be painting to see if you even want to join. And I think that's it, you guys. Thank you so, so much for joining. Um, I'm going to post this picture. I'll post both of them. You can see both of them. Um, and I hope you guys have a great Sunday. Um, in the post, if you feel like it, there's a virtual tip jar, but not necessary. I have fun painting with you guys no matter what. So I will see you guys next Sunday for a lot of you. So thank you so much. Take care.